Hello guys, this is Prof and welcome to Tech Foundation Africa. This is another episode of our programming with modern C++ series. This is the second part of the fundamental data types in C++ and in this episode, I'm going to continue uh, from where I left off in the previous one. So please, if you haven't watched it, please pause this one and go and watch it. All right, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to talk about performing calculations with integers. To begin with, in the previous episode, we learned about integer data types and what it entails. We learned that integers are negative and positive whole numbers. We also learned about the various ways we can represent integer literals in source code. That is, we have the hexadecimal system, the decimal system, the octal and binary systems. Now, each of this has its own notation. Since integers are numbers, we would like to perform calculations and uh, other operations with them. So in this video, I'm going to talk about performing calculations with integers. This is the outline of today's tutorial. The main topic is performing calculations with integers and under it, I'm going to talk about arithmetic operations, assignment operations, compound operators, the size of operator, incrementing and decrementing integers, postfix increments and postfix decrement. The operations that we can perform on integers are defined by operators. The values that an operator acts upon are called operands. Okay, so in an addition expression such as 4 plus 5, 4 and 5 are called the operands, and the addition is the operator. Now, operators that require two operands are called binary operators. Operators like the minus operator act on just one operand, hence, it is said to be a unary operator. For instance, negative 5. Arithmetics is the study of numbers, especially the properties of traditional operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now, the basic operations that can be carried on integers are called arithmetic operations. This is the same as uh, what we have in mathematics, okay? It is the same as arithmetic in mathematics with the exception of the introduction of another operator called the modulo or the remainder operator. The remainder operator is symbolized by the percent sign in C++. And um, the modular operator, uh, what it does is when you perform a division operation, it retains the remainder. So that is why we also call it the remainder operator. So these are the basic arithmetic operators that are defined in C++. So we know of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division in our normal mathematical arithmetics and uh, the modulo which like I said has been introduced to compute the remainder of division operations. Now all the arithmetic operators are binary in nature. The division operator however has a little twist. Why am I saying this? When the division operator operates on two integers, the result is always an integer. This is what we call integer division. For example, you would expect that 5 divided by 2 will give you 2.5 as an answer. However, that is not entirely true in C++. 5 divided by 2 will give you an answer of 2. This is because of what we call integer division. Now, this is because integers cannot actually take on floating point numbers. So, what happens is that the result will be truncated and the floating part would be ignored. With this in mind, whenever you are performing division operations with integers, you have to make sure you completely understand this dynamic. One thing I want you to know is that the number is not rounded to the nearest integer but truncated. Now, to truncate means that, for instance, if we have 4.8 and 4.3 as, as a result or as a result, the, uh, the answer that we will get would be 4, okay? So, it doesn't matter whether the number after the decimal place is more than 5, it will just be truncated and ignored. So, in simple terms, the difference between the integer division and the modulo or remainder operator is that the integer division retains the number of times the denominator divides the numerator and then discards the remainder but the modulo operator retains the remainder after the integer division so this means that the modulo operator actually 
complements the integer division. In mathematics, you cannot divide a number by zero. This, this results in undefined, okay? Similarly, in C++, when the denominator is zero, the result of uh, inter division or integer division and modulo will be undefined. Now, undefined in this context means that the result totally depends on the compiler and uh, how it has been programmed to respond in such situations and also on it, it depends on your computer architecture. This diagram actually illustrates the difference between integer division and uh, modular operator. So if we look at the integer division, if we take a number like 11 divided by 4, okay, so 4 would divide 11 uh, two times. Is that okay? Remember 3. But for integer division, it will return the 2 as the result and it will discard the 3. Whereas the modular operator for the same operation, uh, would discard the integer division, okay, and re rather retain the remainder as the result. So this is a perfect illustration of the difference between the integer division and the modulo operator. Now let's look at an example in code. Okay, so I have a very simple code here, which is the normal C++ programming language uh, program that you know. The only changes I've made in here is that instead of declaring using namespace std globally, I have rather declared the things that I'm using. Okay, so you realize that in this program, I'm only using C out, endl, and C in. Not, I'm not even using C in, right? So I can actually take C in off. So these are the only things I'm using from the namespace. So there is no point importing everything in the namespace in my program. Okay, so let's look at the following examples. I have defined two variables, num1, and I've initialized it with a value 8, and num2 has been initialized with a value 2, okay? So with the multiplication operation, uh, if we multiply num1 by num2, okay, and take note that multiplication in C++ is represented by the uh, asterisk sign, is that okay? So this is going to give us multiply num1 and num2 and we will see the result and this is going to do the uh, division okay and uh, this would be the modulo then we have an example on addition and an example on subtraction so let's go ahead and run this program all right so you see 8 times 2 gives us 16 8 divided by 2 gives us 4 8 modulo 2 gives us 0 now remember we said that the modulo is a remainder operator is that okay and you realize that 2 can divide 8 without any remainder okay and uh, so the, the result will be 0 now 8 plus 2 is 10 8 minus 2 is 6 now let's go back and change the initial value so for instance I'm going to set this to 11 okay so that now we have 11 sets as the initial value of num1 now let's run the code again so this time we have 11 times 2 giving us 22 11 divided by 2 gives us 5 so now you have seen the effect of integer division and as a matter of fact 11 divided by 2 should actually give us 5.5 okay i realize that we uh, it just gave us five it didn't round it to six or something okay it just gave five so like i said for integer division everything the floating part of the number is actually truncated then you can also see here 11 modulo 2 gives us one because uh, 2 would divide 11 uh, five times which will be 10 okay and there will be a remainder of one 11 plus 2 give us 13 then 11 plus um, 11 minus 2 will give us 9 okay so this is how uh, the arithmetic operators are used just as they are used in mathematics now let's look at another program illustrating a simple um, interest operation okay i'm just trying to show you how you can build uh, programs with just the simple things that we've designed so far so this program calculates simple interest from a given principal rate and time is that okay so i've created a variables of all these and uh, initialize them to zero if you don't understand why i'm saying this please watch my previous videos 
and uh, you would get things clearer okay so here i'm prompting the user for input okay so enter principal read and time and uh, one thing probably you haven't seen is that you can you can actually do this okay you can use just one scene statement to record values to multiple variables now what happens is that uh, c in will always stop okay c in will always stop when it comes across the space so the way we have to enter these values on the command prompt is enter this principal followed by space then the rate followed by space then the time followed by space now this also means that if you swap if you type time as the second value and rate as the third value it's going to read it according to this order so when you are doing such a thing you have to make sure that you get your input right so after we have the input then we can calculate the simple interest is that okay and the formula is principal times rate times time divided by 100 now take note everything here has been defined as an integer so the results that we'll be getting here is going to be in the form of integer division is that okay then finally we print out the interest so let's run this code and see all right so it says enter the principal rate and time so i'm going to enter a principal of 10 followed by space now the rates i'll make it one percent remember you cannot type decimal numbers here else you throw your program into an erratic mode and the time let's enter two so it says that the simple interest is zero now the question is why how can the simple interest be zero so let's try and calculate it ourselves okay so the principal was 10 the rate was one and the time was two okay so that gives us 10 times one times two which is 20 20 divided by 100 will give us 0 0.2 is that okay and since uh these are integers it will truncate it that means it will tell us that the result is what zero so you have to be very careful when you are dealing with integers and division make sure you actually uh, understand what you are doing and everything is right okay now let's run the code again and this time enter bigger values so i'm going to enter 100 and uh, 2 and 2 okay so now we get 4 which actually makes sense because uh, 2 times 2 will give us 4 times 100 will give us 400 400 divided by 100 that gives us 4 Okay, so this is a very simple demonstration of how you can apply the arithmetic operators in, uh, uh, to solve problems. Now, I want us to look at what we call compound arithmetic expressions. Sometimes we have to calculate or evaluate arithmetic expressions uh, which is made up of more than one arithmetic operator. Now, this kind of expression is known as the compound arithmetic expression. In a, in a compound arithmetic expression, you must take care. Whenever, whenever you are evaluating a compound arithmetic expression, you must take care in the way and manner you evaluate the expression. Now, to avoid or to help you avoid certain mistakes, C++ actually defines an order of precedence and associativity as a guide to evaluate arithmetic, uh, compound arithmetic expressions. So let's look at it. Operator precedence determines the grouping in terms of an expression. The associativity of operators is a property that determines how operators of the same precedence are grouped in the absence of parentheses. Now, this affects how an expression is evaluated because uh, certain operators have higher precedence than others. For example, the multiplication operator has a higher precedence than the addition operator. Now, this table shows the order of precedence of the arithmetic operators in the parentheses. So from the table, you realize that parentheses is at the top of all. That means that anytime you wrap something in parentheses, C++ or the compiler will be forced to evaluate that first. Is that okay? Now, after parentheses comes positive and negative. Please take note that this is not uh, addition and subtraction positive and negative as in a negative number a positive number so if you have if you have to negate a number 
in an expression you have to make sure you do that before any arithmetic operation is that okay now once you are done with this the next group are the multiplicative operators which uh, consist of the multiplication division and the modulo now all these guys have the same order of precedence okay they have the same of the order of precedence if it is power it's like they have the same position then addition and subtraction also have the same position then at the lowest or the lowest of them all is the assignment operation so it means that if you have an equation or whatever it is you always have to make sure that you perform all these arithmetic things and the last thing to do is the assignment operation so let's look at example in code okay so in here i have a compound expression okay they can see that i have addition division subtraction multiplication modulo uh, subtraction again addition and modulo so it's a mixture of almost all the um all, almost all the arithmetic operators is that okay so how would this be evaluated first of all let us run it and see the results okay so the first expression gives us a result of 10 and the second one gives us a result of 6 let's see whether we can we can do it on our own okay so first of all we will have to ignore all addition and subtraction because they have uh, they have a, a lower order of precedence is that okay but unfortunately we also have division multiplication and modulo which also have the same order of precedence so the question is how do we evaluate them okay so this is when associativity comes in so the rule of associativity tells you that when you have operators of the same precedence or the same uh, order of precedence then evaluate them from left to right so what we will do first is first you divide you divide 9 by 3 and that will give us 3 okay then we divide uh, we multiply 6 by 4 that will give us 6 times 4 will give us 24 okay uh, we will skip this for the meantime come here 7 modulo 3 will give us a 1 so this is what we have at the end of the first round but we still have modulo operator so we have to still ignore the we have to still ignore the addition and subtraction so 24 mod 3 24 so 3 7 21 3 8 24 so this will give us a zero is that okay this will give us a zero now we are left with only addition and subtraction so since they also have the same order of precedence we have to evaluate them from left to right so 8 plus 3 will give us 11 minus 0 won't change a thing minus two, 11 minus 2 will give us 9 9 plus 1 will give us 10 so that was the reason we had 10 as the result now let's quickly look at the second expression now in the second expression we have the same thing as what we had in the first expression with exception of the fact that we have forced some parentheses in here okay we have forced some parentheses now if you look at our order of precedence it said that every time you meet parentheses make sure you evaluate all parentheses first so let us do just that so first of all 8 plus 9 will give us 17 okay then 3 minus 2 will give us 1 now that we are done dealing with all parentheses let us look at the mul uh, multiplication division and modulo guide again we implement left to right so 17 divided by 3 you know 3 3 5 15 okay 3 5 15 and from there it will go to 18 so actually 3 divided 17 divided by 3 is going to give us 5 because of uh, integer division then the next thing is 4 times 6 6 times 4 will give us 6 4 6 4 will give us 24 okay we have to skip on this then come here 7 modulo 3 would give us one then we still have the modulo operator so we have to ignore addition and subtraction now 24 mode 1 <laughs> 24 mode 1 will actually give us zero because one can totally 
uh, divide 24 so now we are left with subtraction and addition okay so 5 minus 0 would leave it unchanged and 5 plus 1 will give us 6 so that is why we had 6 as the second answer so you see how easy it makes it uh, to apply the order of precedence and the law of associativity okay so please make sure you understand this concept and anytime you write this kind of mixed or compound expressions you know how to evaluate it now to be on a safer side you can use uh, brackets to force your expression to evaluate as you mean and i would totally advise that make sure you put in the parentheses okay don't just leave things this way you realize that it's the same set of numbers but by forcing parentheses or depending on where uh, the parentheses have been inserted we had different result and this can also we, if we change the positions of the uh, parentheses we will still keep getting other and uh, other different answers the next thing i want us to look at is the assignment operation now the only time the value of a variable cannot change is when it is modified by the const keyword as we saw in the previous tutorial so aside this the value of any variable can be overwritten using what we call the assignment operator is that okay and here it's represented by or is symbolized by the equal to sign is that okay now please note that um the assignment operator uh, what we call equal sign in mathematics is not used for comparison in c plus plus is that okay so if you want to perform equality which is a relational operation then you have to use the double equal to sign and take note that there is no space in between them now a c plus plus statement uh, that has an assignment operator in it is called an assignment operation in an assignment statement what happens is that the right hand side is evaluated okay and the result is stored in the variable at the left hand side so technically your left hand side should always be a variable it cannot be an expression that is not allowed okay now the number of times that the value of a variable can be overwritten is as many times as you want there is no restriction on it okay and the computer is totally fine with that now there are some operators called compound assignment operators or op equal operators okay uh, let's look at what they do now consider an assignment operation like the following okay so we have um, short age so this is a variable declaration and initialization and i have age equals to age plus one so this is a typical example of assignment an assignment operation or an assignment statement so you realize that uh, this can be written in the format right hand side operator equal to left hand side is that okay where the lhs actually represent the variable of some kind sorry for the mistake here the variable of some kind the rhs is the expression is that okay now this is equivalent to the following statements if i write lhs of code equals to rhs this is how you you disintegrate it okay it's the same as lhs okay so whatever variable is at the right hand side then the equal to sign then the variable at the right hand side again followed by the operator then followed by whatever other expression now what i want you to look at is this uh, parenthesis okay we call them we, we say that the parentheses are implied so for instance if i want to write if i write something like x let's say i have a variable x and y if i want if i write something like x multi uh, multiplication uh, and assignment okay so this is what we mean op equal to the op here represent to them uh, represent the multiplication and the equal to so if i do x multiplied equal to y plus one this expression actually means x equals to x times into bracket y plus one now take note of it carefully it means what x equals to x multiplied by into bracket one plus one now without this implied parenthesis here is that okay uh, the equivalence of the expression would be x equals to x times y plus one and you know that this is not the same as this 
okay this is not the same as this for instance let's say x is 2 and y is 1 x is uh, x is 2 y is also 2 is that okay x is 2 y is also 2 here we are going to get 2 times 2 plus 1 so here that will give us 3 2 so 3 times 2 will give us 6 but over here we are going to get 2 times 2 which is 4 plus 1 okay so this is not the same as this so anytime you write an expression in this form note that it is equivalent to this but not this so this includes the following so almost so all the arithmetic operators you can use them in a compound assignment and we also have these bits wise operators okay but i'm not going to talk about them now okay so let's focus on the arithmetic operators so if you want to do a compound form of addition it is plus and equal to minus and equal to for subtraction multiplication and equal to for multiplication division and the modulo okay so they all follow the same thing now when you are writing the compound assignment operation note that you cannot put space between the operator used and the assignment operator you have to put them together as one unit so this table uh, from the table you can see that the the shift left okay over here this this is called a shift left and the right uh, shift right okay they, they look similar to uh, the c out operator which we call it the insertion operator and the extraction operator is that okay now um you shouldn't worry about this we will actually deal with bitwise operators i shouldn't worry about this because um your compiler is smart enough to know what it means in the statement from the context of the expression is that okay now let us look at this in some code okay so here i have three variables y x and z is that okay so if i write y plus or equal to one remember i said it means that or it's equal to y equals to y plus one is that okay why so what we are doing is that hey read the current value of y add one to it and save it back to y so this is equivalent to saying that we are incrementing whatever value is in y by one is that okay and uh, if i also do x multiply equals to y plus one this remember is the same as x equals to x times into bracket y plus one is that okay and it is not equal to this okay then z modulo equal to x plus y2 would be equal to z equal to z modulo x plus y into bracket so please uh, using these things using these things is very interesting but make sure you understand the dynamics okay so let's run this code and see all right so you can see we have y equals to eight and let's see uh, y was originally seven and we added one to it so yeah y is equal to eight uh, x x is uh, 90 y because we said x equals to uh, x equals to x x times equal to y plus one okay and we said this would be the same as y plus one now remember at this point y is no more seven because this operation changed the value of y from seven to eight so we will get nine over here is that okay we get nine over here and the value of x was initialized to 10 so that gives us 9 times 10 which is what 90 okay then finally the value of z is 4 now z is z modulo equal to x plus y and we said that this would mean so z is 4 okay so we have 4 here modulo x plus y x is 90 y is uh is 8 is that okay so that becomes 98 and whenever uh, actually 4 divided by 98 is 0 remainder what 4 so because the modulo operator retains the remainder of an operation that is why z is 4 okay all right the next thing is the size of operator the amount of space in bytes occupied by a particular data type can be obtained using what we call the size of operator now the size of operator can also be used on any data type okay it can also be used on a variable or even the result of an expression okay you can you can actually use the size of operator on any fundamental type 
class type or even pointer type now we'll talk about pointers in another video now the result that that's uh, the size of produces is of type size t size underscore t is that okay so that is the data type of uh, the result of the size of operator is that okay now what you have to know is that the size underscore t is an unsigned in uh, integer type that is defined in the standard uh, library header called cstd def okay cstd definitions now the type the type size underscore t is implementation defined okay so this means that it totally depends on the compiler but then if you use size underscore t your code would always work with any compiler so let's look at the effect of the size of operator in code so in this example i have created a variable age assign it to an initial value of uh, 15 is that okay so all i'm doing is calling so you can use the size of operator in two ways you can use it with parenthesis or you can use it without parenthesis now take note that if you are passing the data type directly then it is compulsory that you bring the parenthesis but if you look at lines line 13 where i'm rather acting on a variable with the size of operator i can choose to omit the parenthesis also if uh, you want to act on an expression with the size of operator then you have to bring the parenthesis is that okay so the catch is that just use parenthesis every time and you can't go wrong with it is that okay so let's let's run this and see all right so it says the size of the type uh, the size of so here we specify the long okay so long is four bytes we've already seen this in the previous video and the size of the variable now this variable is short and uh, i showed in the previous video that my compiler assigns two bytes to short very data type okay now you realize that over here we are performing uh, we are performing we are evaluating an expression with integers and with a short the age is a short variable now in the previous video i said that anytime there is an integer literal without any suffix okay it is by default an integer so what the compiler does is it rather converts the age from short to uh, int from short int to int that is why it is returning a response in what in an integer okay because it's integers that t uh, takes on four bytes why doesn't it rather convert the integer to short i hope you remember what we call the narrowing conversion all right so that is why it will rather convert the smaller one to the bigger one because when you convert from short to int you are not going to lose any data but when you convert from uh, int to short you are going to lose data because you are going to compress the data from four bytes to two bytes now let's also look at what we call incrementing and decrementing integers the operation x equal to x plus one okay as i said uh, from the beginning is called an incrementing operation the same way uh x equals to x minus one is called decrementing operation now why do we call it so you see this is the same as saying that hey take the value the current value of x we'll add one to it and put it back okay so x now changes by one okay and the second one says that take the current value of x subtract one from it and put it back the, the these expressions are actually equivalent to x plus or equal to one x minus or equal to one okay when that's when you apply the compound operation uh, assignment forms is that okay now we call this incrementing because um, after the operation the value of the variable that is in this case x will either be increased by one in the case of an incrementing operation or be decreased by one or reduced by one in the in uh, in the case of uh, decrementing operation now c++ actually defines two special operators just for this purpose we call them the plus plus okay they, they, they are symbolized by plus plus double plus sign and double uh, double uh, minus sign okay the increment and decrement operators are actually unary okay they are unary in nature so they only act on a single operand 
now these operators can be used in uh, two different ways okay and their effects are different depending on the method or the form that you use uh, you can you can put the operator in front of the variable okay in which case it is called a prefix so as you can see here we have plus plus x minus minus x so plus plus so this is called a prefix increment and this is called a prefix decrement when used as a prefix it increments the value of the variable before applying the value in the expression or statement so this means that uh, if i should put this in any expression it's the value of x will be increased by one or decreased by one before that particular expression uh, it is it is within gets evaluated is that okay now another way to use it is after the name of the variable when you use when you use them after the name of the variable we call it the post fix increment or decrement now in the post fix form uh, the value of the variable is increased only after the expression being evaluated is completed is that okay so you see that here we have x plus plus and x minus minus and this the behavior or the effect of this is totally different from the effect of this now care must be taken when you are writing expressions involving incrementing and decrementing operations for instance if you, if you write something like x plus 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 y okay uh, in this in this case the compiler is going to interpret it as x plus plus okay plus y meanwhile you may mean x plus 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 y now what is the difference let's say x is 5 and y is 2 x plus plus means that do this particular expression evaluate this particular expression before you increase the value of x is that okay so this is still going to use the value of x which is 5 so it we are going to get 5 plus 2 and that will give us 7 but then over here if we do y plus uh, plus plus y means that increment the value of y by 1 before you perform this operation so we are going to get 5 plus 3 y3 because the value of y is incremented by one so it moves from two to three so this one will give us one more than this so you have to be very careful when you are writing these things know that if you do this the uh, compiler is going to interpret it as this now to to avoid this just make sure you put the right spaces or probably parentheses in them is that okay now let's look at another example Assuming I write total is equal to plus plus count times 3 plus count plus plus, okay. The result of this statement is actually undefined. Now, why? This is because the statement modifies the value of count more than once using the incrementing operators. Look, look here. We first incremented the value of count and we are going to perform another increment. Is that okay? So, we cannot guarantee what this one would, would evaluate to even if the compiler doesn't give you a warning or an error now even though uh, this expression is said to be undefined according to uh, the c++ standard it doesn't mean that the compiler won't compile them okay the compiler will still compile them but there will be no guarantee of consistency another expression that you should try to avoid is something like this is that okay now in this case you you are actually incrementing the value of h here for the first time then when this expression is done it is also going to increment this or change this again so you are changing the value of h twice now starting with c plus plus 17 however uh, the uh, the expressions like this have been well defined is that okay they have been well defined informally the c++ edition of the standard added the rule that all side effects of the right side of an assignment that and this includes um, uh, compound assignments and uh, increments and decrement okay are fully committed before evaluating uh, the left hand side and the actual assignment okay however the precise rules of uh, when precisely an expression is defined 
or its undefined remain subtle is that okay even in the c plus plus 17 so uh, my advice is do not attempt to read a variable again after it has been um, modified in in the same expression is that okay so let us look at this uh, in sample code okay so here i have two variables total and count is that okay so this one is an increment operation so this is what total plus plus is that a okay? count plus plus uh, plus six so it is first going to use the original value of count which is five add it to six that gives us a result of seven is that okay before it changes the value of count by one so the value of count will change anyway but it's not going to have any effect on this expression is that okay now you realize that if you mistakenly delete this space here then you have something else is that okay so to be on a safer side and uh, i think it is best to write such expressions this way in this case you don't um you don't uh, have any problem with spaces and all those kind of stuff now alternatively you can also wrap um, this side in parentheses uh, to force this to be evaluated first okay now when we do when we do this okay this expression is similar to saying total equals to count plus six okay then afterwards increment the value of count by one because like i said since this is the prefix increment okay it will not have any effect on this so it will just be like saying total equals to count plus six and then afterwards you increment the value of count by one okay all right okay so these are some of the things that i said you should avoid okay let's let's run this and see all right so let's look at the result and see whether we can make sense out of it so for the first one for the first one starting from here okay uh, total is two count is five so over here count plus 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 six uh, that will give us five plus six which is eleven is that okay but afterwards okay oh sorry i actually have to no i was using these ones as a way of showing stuff okay as a way of showing stuff so let me just comment them out okay all right now close this and run again okay so uh here we have count plus 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 five so you see that it gives us a result of what 11 so that means count was not incremented if count has uh, if count had increment uh it would have changed to six and this would have given us what 12 is that okay now if you look down here what uh these are the things that i said we should avoid so first of all i'm resetting count to five is that okay and performing the operation total equals to that that and uh, it gives us 48 let's see if we can make sense out of it now plus plus count is supposed to give us what it's supposed to give us six right then six times three will give us 18 then count plus plus okay count plus plus would actually not uh, do it have any effect but since we've already increment uh, count by one that means count is no more five but six right so we should get six uh, times five which is 30 is that okay six times five which is which is 30 so we have 30 plus um here 18 is that okay 30 plus 18 which actually gives us 48 okay then over here we reset count again and uh, count plus 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 one okay so we would expect that um, this will not take any effect and we will get um, count plus one which will be six so count is six and afterwards we also expect count to increase so we expect count to be seven right i realize that count is six so it means that the post uh, post increment actually didn't work is that okay it just remained five and one was added to it so it became six is that okay and the value still remains so this is what we call the undefined behavior you cannot uh, you cannot be guaranteed consistency 
all right so this brings us to the end of our tutorial on the integer data types in the next tutorial i'm going to treat the floating point data type as i always say don't fall for shortcuts when you are learning programming always follow the process take your time to understand the language that you are using okay because uh, you are as good as how best you can use your tools now i want to express my gratitude to our our partners and sponsors Saytec designs and builds smart agricultural machinery suited for african conditions and use now they also provide fabrication training and computer aided design services to manufacturing companies Siratec Technologies is an electronics component retail shop at China House at Dumkumase. Contact them for all your electronics components, including Arduino kits and sensors of all kinds. Okay, and uh, Tescan Enterprise is the number one distributor of electronic components, electrical components, and hardware. You can locate them at HM4 Market, Kumase. Call them for all electronic components from analog to digital devices. Electronics deals in uh, smart electronic system design and development, software and web application design and development, IoT system design, project and research, and also IT training. You can contact us for assistance in your next billion dollar project. If you want to be a sponsor or partner with us, please call the numbers on the screen and we will be happy to sit down with you. You also have the power to contribute to support our course you can donate in cash or kind we actually need a quality camera and sound system for our video recordings and uh, your support will be appreciated you can momo us any amount from five cds to five billion ghana cds using the momo account below remember kitwebiensa help us make africa tech literate thank you for watching this video don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this channel we want to know how we can make this training better for you so let us hear from you by posting a comment in the comment box below all right i am professor and this is tech foundation africa